guys, welcome back. Today we're going to get back into our normal Warhammer videos with Caradron Overlords. The Caradron Overlords are masters of the skies, fearless Dwarden aeronauts who prize profit above all. They sail the clouds in steel-clad vessels armed to the teeth with cannons, bombs, and bullet-spraying deck guns, matching the raw fury of demons and monsters with devastating firepower. These technological wonders are powered by the lighter-than-air mineral known as Aether Gold, the lifeblood of the great Garadron Empire. The Age of Sigmar appeared to herald a time of plenty for the Garadron skyports. The mercantile Dwarden forged prosperous new contracts and alliances with the forces of Sigmar the God King that kept a constant stream of gold flooding into their coffers. Yet a storm was looming on the horizon. Nagash, supreme lord of the undead, unleashed the horror of the necroquake and the tumultuous ripples of this catastrophe rocked the Eight Realms. Prosperous Aether Gold deposits were displaced by storms of raw magic, swept into uncharted lands. The skyports suffered greatly as hosts of unquiet spirits set upon their fleets and cut off precious trade lanes. However, in disaster there is opportunity. From the bustling docks of the Caradron's floating cities depart gleaming sky fleets, armed for war and eager to seek out precious new streams of Aether gold. Ironclad ships of the line lead brave ventures into the deadliest corners of the Eight Realms in search of precious Aether gold, following by sleek escort gunships, zipping between the flotilla like pilot fish. From the decks of their flagships, Caradron admirals drive their hearty crews on with promises of unlimited wealth and everlasting fame. Masters of the Skies High above the clouds of the mortal realms, there thrives an empire of unrivaled prosperity and aerial power. Guided by the wisdom of their code, the Caradron overlords send forth airship fleets to dominate the skyways. All who challenge the Caradron's supremacy are quick to suffer the wrath of their techno-arcane war machines. Bursting from the clouds on contrails of vapor come squadrons of broad-framed airships, their aether cannons swiveling to bear upon grounded foes before opening fire with the fury of a volcanic eruption. Nimble escort ships dart between the hulls of flying fortresses, well-drilled gunners adding their own withering volleys to the barrage. The sheer devastation unleashed by this considerable arsenal turns the world to fire and smoke. Whatever is left of the Caradron's enemies stagger from the inferno in time to see the airships descend, spilling battle-hardened crews of privateers into the fray. Grizzled Dwarden sky dogs leap over the gunwales with cutlasses drawn and shanties upon their lips, eager to earn both glory and a fine haul of plunder.
Mercantile Masters. The Caradron Overlords are a conglomerate of Dwarden powers united by a shared legacy of sky travel and a burning desire for the miraculous resource known as Aether Gold, which powers their empire. Unlike the majority of their Dwarden kin, the Caradron long ago forsook their ancient mountain holds and took to the clouds upon floating cities known as sky ports. There they survived the devastation of the Age of Chaos, cleaving to the document known as the Caradron Code, an exhaustive set of guidelines, laws, and transactional rules that governs the often messy business of commerce and dictates the overlord's every decision. For centuries the Caradron dwelt in isolation, trading amongst themselves as their air fleets rebelled endless assaults from the demonic servants of the Dark Gods. When Sigmar the God King returned to the realms at the dawn of a new age, driving back the Chaos Hordes and erecting proud free cities amidst the wilds of the realms, the Caradron sensed great opportunity. They ended their isolation, setting their devastating aerial firepower against the enemies of civilization and striking oaths of alliance with the armies of the heavens. In Sigmar's rising empire, the Caradron saw a lucrative new trading partner, and ever since their return, Dwarden airships laden with rare and exotic goods have become a common sight in the docklands of many free cities. Short and stocky, Caradron are comparable in stature to their ground-dwelling kin and possess many similar traits. They are stubborn, resilient as stone, and take great pride in hard work and iron discipline. However, there are also marked differences. For one, the Caradron largely scorn organized worship, save for the more traditionalist skyboards such as Barak Thring. Caradron acknowledge the presence of magic and godly beings, of course, but they believe that there is a rational, science-based formula behind all outwardly inexplicable <coughs> happenings. Caradron society is well-ordered and highly meritocratic. Each of the skyports is governed by an admiral's council, which in turn presides over a body of the six most powerful guilds in that city. Every single captain, guild, company, and council member is considered for their position due to a combination of their innate talent professional record, and potential for increasing their skyport's profits. The bottom line is all that matters. The image of Grumni, the Dwarden Smith God, adorns many Caradron vessels and statues, though to the majority of these Dwarden he is more a sign of fortune and a paternal ancestor spirit than a figure of active worship in their lives. If the tribulations of the Age of Chaos taught the Caradron overlords anything, it was that they must rely on their own ingenuity and fortitude, and not upon the benevolence of far-off deities. Pragmatism also governs the Caradron's approach to matters of honor. While they take sworn oaths as seriously as any Dwarden, the Caradron are perfectly willing to exploit loopholes and technicalities in loosely worded contracts to maximize their advantage and material gain in any situation. Never sign a Caradron writ without reading it ten thousand times is a common saying amongst dispossessed clan chiefs, and it is wise advice. Though the Sky Dwarden are not callous beings, they display a notoriously flexible moral compass when it comes to matters of business. 
as far as they are concerned. Anyone foolish enough to sign a contract without fully anticipating any and all potential outcomes deserves no sympathy whatsoever. This mercenary attitude has caused a deal of friction between the Caradron and representatives of the Free Cities, but by and large the relationship between the Skyports and their Sigmarite allies is cordial. Both benefit greatly from the other's presence and rely on their support in times of war. That said, Caradron look upon foreigners as somewhat naive and uneducated, and many less scrupulous captains and admirals have taken advantage of their neighbors, charging extortionate prices for much-needed supplies, undermining their trading partners whenever possible, and making a killing through the sale of useless goo that they claim possess the power to ward off evil spirits. The nefarious skyboard of Barak Mornar has long been suspected of involvement in the illicit trade of cursed artifacts and other forbidden items funneled through the black markets of the free cities, though its council has been swift to deny these rumors. Spectral entities shall not be considered subject to the rules of engagement as dictated in the third article of the Code. Additional. No contract of any kind may be agreed with a party that cannot take and hold a draft of Kesrak in confirmation of said agreement. Kesrak being Caradron Stout. Amendment 37 to Article 9 of the Caradron Code, ratified by the Admiral's Council in the aftermath of the Sheish Necroquake. For all their cutthroat business acumen, the Caradron seldom risk open war with their trading partners. This is a stance born of cold logic more than anything else, for the Caradron scorn decisions based on emotion. They remember well the age of chaos, when Dwarden stubbornness and reluctance to accept the inevitable almost led to the destruction of their entire race. The Caradron also recognize that a realm dominated by the God King will be a sight more profitable than one conquered by the undead legions of Nagash, smashed to rubble by greenskin hordes, or corrupted by the vile touch of chaos. When war calls, the skyports rally to the side of civilization though they always ensure that they receive fitting compensation for their efforts. Air Power Empire The Caradron skyports claim dominion over the airways of the mortal realms, and there are few who would dispute that assertion. These enormous floating citadels are both bustling hubs of trade and military strongholds, capable of drifting vast distances in search of prosperous lands and blasting invading armies out of the sky with barrages from their gigantic aether cannon arrays. Visitors from all across the realms are welcomed into the skyport's bustling dock districts and merchant quarters, where every imaginable treasure and exotic resource is available to purchase. The secret to the Sky Dwarden's military and economic might is their mastery of Aether Gold. This magical substance is found as vapor in the skies of the mortal realms, and amongst a thousand other uses, is processed in order to power the Caradron's mighty ships of the line and their weapons of war. The skyport's desire for either gold is all-consuming and with every sunrise, scores of prospector fleets are dispatched in pursuit of valuable new mining territories. Each of these ventures is led by an admiral, who chooses a single vessel, typically the largest and deadliest in the fleet, as his flagship. 
hardened privateers with a keen eye for opportunity. Caradron admirals are responsible for ensuring that each voyage culminates in a healthy share of riches for their crew. From the smallest escort gunship to the mightiest heavy cruiser, these imposing steel-hulled vessels are built to dominate the skies. When the need arises, they are equally deadly when fighting close to the ground. Each member of a skyship's crew is a soldier as much as an aeronaut, rigorously trained for battle and armed with a lethal combination of pistols, boarding axes, and cutlasses. When the fleets go to war, the ships of the line can also call upon battle-hardened Grunstock marines, specialist soldiers hired to repel borders and obliterate anything that stands between a Caradron sky vessel and its prize. In recent times, the prosperity of the skyports has been greatly threatened by an outpouring of untapped magic. Nagash, the god of undeath, inverted the arcane energies of Sheish through a vast necromantic ritual, giving rise to the all-devouring vortex known as the Sheish Nadir. The creation of this black abyss at the heart of the realm of death sent a shockwave across reality, throwing the laws of magic into disarray. Storms of geists were dragged up from the underworlds to prey upon the living, and rampaging predatory spells wrought great destruction on the business interests of the skyboards. The Caradron named this grim event the Garak Dorman, or the Great Gale of Death. Its effect on their trading monopolies and mining of precious aether gold was significant. Such was the etheric disturbance in the skies that many of the greatest and most lucrative seams were swept wildly off course, dragged far across the realms into uncharted regions. Once reliable revenue streams were thrown into complete disarray, and hundreds of guilds and companies were ruined in a few short months. Yet, as the Caradron are so fond of saying, adversity is the bedfellow of opportunity. The sudden vacuum caused by the loss of so many established mining zones led to a new age of prospection and exploration an aether gold hunt greater and bolder than anything seen since the earliest days of the Caradron Overlord's mighty empire. The Caradron Overlord's military might is founded upon two supreme truths. Firstly, that there is no problem that cannot be overcome by Dwarden technology and secondly, that no foe can stand for long in the face of unrelenting and utterly overwhelming firepower. Both doctrines have proven formidably effective. Rise of the Overlords the Caradron Overlord's hard-nosed pragmatism is a remnant of their empire's traumatic birth. In order to survive the horrors of the Age of Chaos, many dwarf and mountain kingdoms were forced to abandon their ancient culture and forge a new path. It is a measure of their resolve and ingenuity that they succeeded. The origins of the Caradron Overlord's mercantile empire lie in strife and bloodshed. In ages past, the progenitors of the Sky Dwarden dwelt in Kaman, realm of metal. Great portions of this strange alchemical realm had been fashioned by the goldsmith Grungni. Excuse me. 
by the smith god Grumni into perfectly geometric continents, their ferric crusts and mountain ranges filled with all manner of priceless resources, including the rare realmstone Camonite, a quicksilver-like liquid metal lost. I'm sorry. Twice in like 15 seconds. A quicksilver-like liquid metal that could be used to power the most wondrous machinery. Having crafted these perfectly ordered lands for his children, Grugni departed for Azir, the realm of heavens, to fulfill an ancient promise to the god-king Sigmar. The smith god was not one to coddle his worshippers, and believed that only by thriving without his guiding presence could they grow strong. For a time, the clans of Dwarden, men, and golem kind that dwelt in the heartlands of Camon did indeed thrive. They rampantly drained the resources of the region, using techno-arcane methods to raise gleaming empires of metal that dominated the lands. The great Dwarden clans were perhaps the most respected of all, dwelling within their wondrous mountain cities and digging deep into the bedrock of Camon to excavate precious minerals and gems. Yet this age of prosperity and wonder would not last, for the primordial enemies of all mortals were stirring once more. The chaos god Zinch had set his eyes upon the realm of metal, for it blazed with potential and sorcerous energy. In the avarice and desire for power that marked the greatest empires of Camon, the changer of the ways found familiar weaknesses on which to prey. Even as his greater demons whispered promises into the ears of Dwarden clan chiefs and human pharaoh mages, the Lord of Sorcery set in motion the corruption of the realm of metal itself. He lured forth the god-beast known as the Lode Griffin from the Aetheric Void, so that it settled at the center of Camon. The immense magnetic energies of this mythical avian behemoth twisted and bent the land, and played havoc with the industry of the great clans and kingdoms nearby. In desperation, they sought to slay the Lode Griffin with a spell of transmutation that would turn its form to solid gold. Yet, though it was seen through to completion, this ritual was twisted by the hand of one of the gaunt summoners, powerful demonic wizards in thrall to Zinch. As the Lode Griffin's flesh was turned to metal, its screams tore open a portal at the center of the spiral crux, and the demons of Zinch poured through. Utterly unprepared for the sheer scale of this sudden invasion, the civilizations of Camon were overwhelmed. Many proud Dwarden empires that had thrived for centuries were doomed to a drawn-out fate sealed within the tombs of their mountain fastnesses to starve or be overrun by the seemingly endless tide of demons. Yet, for a few resolute clans, Dwarden ingenuity provided one last desperate hope for survival. The Steamhead Pioneers, masters of athermatic extraction and cogwork locomotion, labored day and night to create the means of their escape. Utilizing advanced sciences bolstered by the wondrous magical substance known as Aether Gold, the Pioneers raised several cities upon great Endrin, Endrin spheres and aethermatic energizers, escaping the madness engulfing the land by retreating into the skies. These desperate, airborne kingdoms banded together as a loose coalition for mutual protection. Those demons capable of flight pursued, of course, but the Dwarden strongholds, 
that would soon come to be known as Skyports had prepared for this. Their gyrocopter pilots fought a tireless battle to clear the clouds, engaging malformed winged monsters in brutal aerial dogfights. These long years of retreat were unimaginably harsh. Yet in adversity was formed the foundation of a formidable air power. It was precious aether gold that offered the ancestors of the Caradron salvation. This rare gaseous substance laced the skies of the realm of metal. Whenever the skyboards came across seams of the stuff, they drained them dry, innovating ever swifter and more efficient methods of extraction. Yet the frantic competition for resources soon caused old rivalries to flare and buried grudges to come to the surface, as each of the skyboards sought to gather as much aether gold as possible in order to safeguard their own future at the expense of their rivals. Despite the ever-present threat of chaos on the horizon, a civil war between these competing air powers seemed inevitable. And that is where we are going to bring this video to a close. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.